Hello crafty friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Laura. I make all of the videos here for Crafty Not Shifty and this is part three in a mini Halloween series where we've been creating the props for this witch's kitchen window display. I'm really pleased with how each of these turned out. We started on day one with the bottles, day two was the spell box, and then day three, which is hopefully the reason why you're here, we made... I say we, I, I did this. Um, I'm making the bubbling potion. We've also got some kind of fog going on inside there. That is a little contraption that I picked up from Amazon that I'll have linked below. And also this realistic looking fire that I have sat underneath. Now, if you're not wanting to hang a cauldron like this, you can actually just set the cauldron into the fire and that looks really great too. So there you can see the mister working kind of spits a lot of water it's a little disappointing um, but I'll link it below anyway if you want to check it out. So to start us off we are going to need some expanding foam now I'm using it incorrectly <laughs> you're supposed to flip this upside down so the foam was kind of struggling to come out at first and it was kind of falling into the cauldron and I knew I was going to have to address that so um, I eventually read the back and realize a I should have gloves on and b I should be holding it upside down and I fill in the majority of the cauldron with some styrofoam that I happen to have laying around for some uh, packaging for some stuff I'd ordered and um it's nice and lightweight, so I knew I'd still be able to hang this, no problem. So here I've flipped around the can and you can see that the expanding foam is coming out much easier. I'm going to work my way around the edge of the cauldron, just creating those bubbles. You don't want to kind of pull it too quickly in lines, you want to let it kind of bubble up to create that kind of oozy, messy, out of control potion look. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then you can see here just how it keeps growing even though you're not doing anything to it so do be careful it can easily get out of control um, but I'm a more is more person you'll see I add a, a whole bunch more. So now I've got a fresh can because I'd ran out of the aerosol in that last one and I'm just I'm just going to town <laughs> with this potion. Um, I think my too much gene kind of kicked in but um I'm still really pleased with how it turned out. So I did set a small um, piece of Tupperware inside of the middle of this because I knew I was going to have to have a reservoir for water for my little uh, mist maker. And I set that in and made sure the wire was kind of hidden inside of the foam. So now we've moved indoors and everything is dry and set. It says it takes a couple hours, but I actually left this overnight. I mixed together a green paint and a black paint and then just gave everything a coat so it was that nice kind of greeny color. Then I have a black paint that I've added just a tiny bit of green to it because I didn't want it to be too true black and I'm going to go ahead and paint that in all the shadowy areas. I'm using the same paintbrush that I used for the base coat. You don't have to be precise with this. I said this in my last video. That's the joy of these Halloween crafts. They can be messy and dirty and it just kind of adds to the effect. So I'm using a yellow for highlights and then that black with the touch of green in it for the shadow areas. And I'll just go ahead and do that all over this piece. It looked really good here, or at least in my opinion, um, but I did find somehow when it had dried, it all seemed to look a little bit darker. But you'll see that in just a second, and um, I addressed it with a whole bunch of glitter. You could definitely omit that step if you um, don't want to be covered in glitter for the next six months. So there we go, I sat and did this while I was watching a film. Once everything was painted up, I went outside again and I took some newspaper and just stuffed that into the reservoir where the water will be because I don't want to get that filled up with, uh, with glitter. And then I'm taking PVA glue and spreading that all over my potion and pouring on a whole heap of glitter. I'm actually using multiple different shades of green, some black in there and some yellow. And I mean, I just went to town. <laughs> it was everywhere. So that is it for now on the potion. We're going to let that dry and start on the fire. So here I've got some sheets of foam board taped together and I'm starting with a base of the same expanding foam. 
I'm then going to lay in some orange lights. These are actually supposed to be a spider web. They were a pound from Poundland and um, they're an orange light, which is perfect for that fiery glow. So I've set them in and then I'm just going to lay some sticks on top to create a fire. Now, I don't know what I was thinking with the way I lay these. I promise I can build a fire. I have three of them here, one in my living room, one in the kitchen and one in the garden. So I'm, I'm used to setting fires, but um, apparently not fake ones. That sounds like I'm an arsonist. I'm not. Okay. And so I'm going to fill this in with some more expanding foam. This time I want the expanding foam to look almost like coals. So I don't want it to be too smooth. So I'm taking a pick and I'm just sort of stabbing at the foam and kind of pulling at the edges so it doesn't create a smooth rounded bubble like we wanted for the potions it's just got a little bit more texture and then I'm just going to keep layering everything up adding some more sticks and then adding some more foam and just making sure that I don't cover up too much of those lights because we still want to be able to see that orange glow to create the fire effect now, what would have been really perfect is if I had flickering lights for this, but unfortunately, um, I mean, orange lights were kind of hard to find and this was the best that I could get. And for a pound, I cannot complain. Um, but if you really wanted to take it up a notch, glittering, uh, sorry, flickering lights would be best. So now I'm taking that same spray paint from day one. This is my matte black and I'm just spraying around. I'm kind of coating the very bottom edges and the rest of it, I'm just applying a very light coat and letting some of that foam shine through because again, we don't want to block all the light on this. And I'm just testing it by turning the lights on and off, but um, you can't really see that in the video because it's quite bright, but I will show what this looks like in the dark later on. So now to finish up the fire, I'm going to go ahead and add some glitter because I want it to look fiery even in the daylight. So this time I have some orange and red glitters and I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle those on after covering this piece in PVA glue just like before. So on both of these pieces, the fire and the potion, I did actually add some glow in the dark glitter, but you don't get much of a payoff. Um, or at least I didn't in this example, so I would recommend maybe skipping that because it doesn't doesn't seem to add too much. I could maybe try adding some glow in the dark embossing powder I have that I know works really well. Um, but overall, I, I think I'm done with this. I think I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. So I did also add in some black glitter and you can see the difference now in how cautious I was with the glitter towards the start and now I'm just it's everywhere i'm just throwing it around so i tapped off some of the excess and then i added a cup hook it's really small it will leave a hole in my ceiling but it's it's very small and i can fix it and i hung the cauldron using a chain that i picked up off amazon and i added some twine around the handle as well then i'm going to go ahead and paint up the cauldron I used my chalkboard matte black paint and then I added some more of the um, copper that I used in the last video. This is the Tim Holtz uh, Distress paint and then I just layered the black over the top of that until I was happy with the colours and then here we have it. So I've switched on the mist maker and you can see it does create a little bit of mist. It's not quite as impactful as I was expecting. Maybe that's because of the shape of the um, potion around it, kind of forcing everything to stay inside that well. It does spit a lot of water, um, but the foam is waterproof, so it's fine. <laughs> So there we have it. This is the final piece in my mini series for Halloween 2020. I do hope you've enjoyed watching. I've already had a few pictures sent to me of people um, creating their own versions, which is really great to see. I love to see those. So if you do create your own version of any of these projects, do feel free to send them to me or tag me at Crafty Not Shifty on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok, Crafty underscore not underscore shifty. Hopefully I'll improve that name and get crafty not shifty eventually. But here we go. That is my mini Halloween series all finished for this year. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're not already subscribed, you could go ahead and click the subscribe button. Honestly, it doesn't really do too much these days. If you want to be notified of my videos, make sure you ring the bell. And I hope to see you back here again soon for another video. Bye for now.